Well, hello, everyone out there in internet land. It's Travis. And I figured I'd try a new show, simply called Narrator for Hire. In this show, I will take submissions to read some of the sexiest things you can possibly find on the internet. And today, there has been a really good one found. Submitted by the sweet, sweet Scott, Gregor Allen. She Wants It For The Bee by Cats and My Waffles. Barry, are you sure? Vanessa gasped. She and Barry had been together for a year. She loved him. He loved her. They had everything they ever wanted. And that was each other. But Leah wanted more. What was this more that she could possibly need? Well, this particular thing that she wanted was driving her crazy. She wanted it. No, she needed it. She needed a good, hard fucking. She needed to be fucked so hard that she couldn't walk for days. She needed near pelvis crushing, thrusting between her legs. She learned for something, anything that would bring her the pleasure she desired. Barry observed her troubled expression, knowing exactly what she was thinking, what she wanted of him. Vanessa, I am very sure. I know you've wanted this for a long time. I don't want to see you suffer like this, Barry pulled on the slick rubber suit Vanessa had made for this very special occasion. Once suited up, he dived into a pile of lubricant beside him, making sure to cover his whole body. But Barry, what if you don't make it out alive? She was having second thoughts. As much as she wanted this, she didn't want to risk losing her bee partner. Vanessa, I love you, and that is why I'm willing to do this. He positioned himself around her crotch, waiting for her thighs to grant him access. Vanessa reluctantly spread her legs wide, leaning back on her arms which supported her weight. Barry was in awe at the sight in front of him, the sight of human female anatomy. He spent a good minute observing the beauty laid before him, taking in all he could see of this majestic beast he believes to be called the vagina. Vanessa blushed hard. Please stop staring at it. You're making me feel self-conscious. Just hurry up and fuck me. Barry readied himself before shooting off into the pink monster. He was greeted to a moist cavern. He wriggled around, trying with all of his might to bring his lover pleasure. From outside this juicy little fun hole, Vanessa focused her entire being on the sensations inside of her, feeling her body heat up. There, Vanessa released a loud moan. He found it. He found the spot. Even Barry, deep inside her, could hear her. He continued to press against that particular spot that caused her to make these erotic sounds. He liked it. He liked the sounds he brought upon her. Vanessa moaned at every movement now. She was close. She had a problem. She needed it faster. Harder. Barry was incapable of doing so. Unaware of her anguish, Barry continued his 
steady fidgeting. Feeling quite accomplished in his work, he decided to go for a bolder move. He dug in deeper. Move through her uterus, he turned on his night vision goggles wanting to see inside the beautiful vagina. It is an understatement to say that he was shocked. A state of sheer horror would be the best way to describe Barry's current self. And what moved him to such a state? It could be the developing human inside his beloved. Vanessa couldn't feel his movements anymore. She was scared. Scared that her vagina had consumed her beloved. She was unaware of the drama occurring inside of her. Unaware she was pregnant. Inside his suit of rubber, the sound of his sobs could not be escaped. She cheated on him. She, the one who was supposed to love him until the day he died and beyond. At that moment, Barry the Bee had lost all he lived for. How could he trust her again? He can't just pretend this never happened. That slut, that dirty whore. Punishment. Barry knew what he had to do. He removed the suit, his body becoming covered in his lover's fluids. He moved closer to the fetus, glaring. He whipped out his bee cock and rubbed it against the skin of the developing human. He began grinding against it, speed increasing with every thrust. His bee cock nagged for release, pushing the bee to his limits. He released against the child of betrayal, pulverizing his beacock in the process. He moved over to the heart, pressing his stinger against it, killing both himself and the fetus. Vanessa couldn't handle it anymore. She reached inside herself, feeling for her lover in the rubber suit. She pulled out an empty suit. Gasping, she returned to feeling around inside herself. It hurt, but she didn't care. All she needed was to retrieve Barry. She grasped something, ripping it out of her with the force of a thousand nuns. She stared at what she'd pulled from inside of her. She saw Barry. He was dead. But that wasn't it. There was a fetus. Barry was attached to the fetus. Her lover and her unborn child were dead. Their bodies in front of her. She picked up the fetus, inserting it back inside of her. At, at, I can at least try and save you. Back in you go, baby, she sobbed. She picked up Barry. How could she try and save him? There was a loud noise from behind her. She hastily turned her body to see some douchebag in a stupid-ass cap. And there were cameras. What the fuck is going on? Vanessa, you've just been gotten punked, Ashton said a little too enthusiastically. He then proceeded to tell her about the entire setup. The way Ashton planted the baby inside her as she slept. The way Ashton plotted to make them both believe she was pregnant. The way Ashton stalked them for days beforehand, knowing about their plan for weird-ass human on bee sex. You motherfucker! Vanessa shrieked, climbing to her feet. She swings in the annoying man, landing a hit on his nose, bones crushing under the pressure of the punch. Barry is dead! 
She took him down, overpowering him with ease. She unzipped his pants and positioned herself over Ashton. She raped him with all her might. She raped him, her thrust conveying her anger on the man. Ashton lay there, unable to move under the power of Vanessa. Tears running down his face as he begged her to stop. He could feel his pelvis cracking, but she didn't listen. Vanessa let out a final moan, screaming, Shrek is love, Shrek is life, as she rode out her orgasm. The cameraman fled as she stared them down. From the way the cameraman saw it, they escaped with their lives. Ashton lay there, pathetic and powerless, this only pissing Vanessa off further. He needed further punishment. She grabbed the lifeless body of the unborn child, tearing off Ashton's pants completely, and with a dry hand, forced her entire fist inside his ass. Ashton cried out in pain and tried to escape the woman. His attempts were futile. Vanessa removed her hand, reaching into herself, fishing out the fetus. Shh, it's okay, Molly dear. You'll be safe inside Mr. Kutcher, she whispered softly into the baby's ear. She shoved Molly into Ashton, a wide grin spread across her face. No tears now, only dreams were the last words Ashton would ever hear. Fiend.